Okay, so I'm Matt and this evening I'm going to do something a little bit different. Um, so it's currently half past midnight and I've just finished my weighted Sorcerer's Cup for the month. It was a seven rounder, um, kindly hosted by the Brighton uh, PvP group. Um, seven rounds, so it would make for quite a long video. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to split it into two. The first part being this one, of course, um, I'm going to talk about my team. Uh, and the strategies I was hoping to use. And I'm also going to go through my losses as well, um, just so I can sort of explain the weak points and what went wrong. Um, and then when, I, when it comes to the next part, I'll go through my wins and hopefully get through it a bit faster because of that. Um, as I say, it's half midnight. Half midnight. Um, I wanted to record this straight away, uh, just so everything's fresh in my memory. So may yawn, you'll have to, apologize. You'll have to, you'll have to excuse me for that. Um, Hopefully not too much. Um, for my team, it was an interesting one for sure. Um, no charmer, no fighter. Um, I didn't like the charmers because, yes, they're fantastic in two shields, but there's a lot of bulky things here. Things like Hypno, Azumarill, Noctowl, that they don't um, you know, they don't beat the Charmers in two shields, but they'll run them very close and take a shield advantage. Uh, and with things like Alolan Muk, which um, sprays out sludge waves and dark pulses as fast as it does, uh, I was really quite keen to try and maintain shield advantage here, um, if, if at all possible. Uh, so I kind of thought, not running a Charmer, that'll take away that temptation. Um, now, Alolan Muk um, doesn't really have a load of reliable two shield counters, um, especially if you're not running a fighter or a charmer. Um, so that was a bit of an issue. So I sort of relied on um, pure bulk to try and do that really from Noctowl and Azumarill, um, as well as Alolan Raticate, which is a fairly bulky pick. Um, being dark type, uh, the muck has to be the bait with the dark pulses, um, or um, or go straight sludge wave, which is a bit more energy, and so you can generally uh, hit your hyperfangs before um, before muck gets to the sludge waves. Certainly enough to kill you anyway. Um, and I've also got quillfish there. Um, which is perhaps the most eyebrow-raising pick here. Um, what I like about Quillfish is that it beats the Charmers in two shields. Um, it beats the Dark Poisons in two shield scenarios as well. Um, admittedly, often often you'll only get one shield back in return, um, but it's a great coverall for the Dark Poisons, the Charmers, and actually Azumarill as well, because it resists every, it resists everything Azumarill can do to it. Um, Yes, it's not doing a load of damage with Water Gun, but I'm I'm uh, running Sludge Wave on mine, which um, tends to catch Azumarill out because I think often people expect either Fell Stinger or Ice Beam uh, on Quillfish. So um, if indeed they expect anything at all, it's a very under the radar pick in my opinion. Um, so yeah, the Quillfish is there to try and cover the Dark Poisons and both varieties of Fairy, but uh, being Charm and Azumarill. Um, what I will say is I think Quillfish is completely outclassed by Drill Run Beedrill. Um, just for the more reliable Azumarill uh, matchup. And as well, it's probably better against Toxic Rope as well, because it's not it's not weak to uh, it's not weak to the mud uh, mud bombs. That's the ground move the Toxic Rope gets, isn't it? Mud bomb. Um, and it, the charmers um are a fighting type counter uh, and what's nice about quillfish is that with its poison typing it beats uh, the fighters as well um, by resisting the, the counter damage toxic croak being the exception um, because of the mud bombs as i say but i think even then you win um, i think you win the zeros and the two shield scenarios i think it's just the one shields where toxic croak comes out on top um, and then i've got bronze on to um, to act as a two shield counter to uh, Charmers, if I need them, and as a counter to Noctowl. Um, not a lot of hard counters for Noctowl. Um, so having Bronzong there, uh, 
sort of ties the two roles together nicely. Um, and then Noctowl as well is my sort of last pick. Um, just, you know, I've got double dark, so it's nice to have um, an extra option against the fighters. Um, I mean, I've got Bronzong there, but that can sometimes be overpowered by Medicham. I've got Quillfish there, but that can sometimes be overpowered by Toxic Rokes. Same with the Zoom roll. So really, my Noctowl's there for um, my Noctowl's there for uh, Toxic Croak. The Noctowl was initially Hypno because um, I really like Hypno's ability to beat Bronzong, Azumarill, and Noctowl if you've got a good IV one. Um, that sort of bulky core, that bulky trio of Azumarill, Noctowl, Bronzong, you'll see on a lot of teams, uh, and Hypno can beat any one of the three, so it's really versatile. Um, but I found that against double dark teams, it just limited my options too much to have, uh, to have Bronzong and Hypno, so changed that to Noctowl. Uh, worth mentioning, the Azumarill moveset is Play Rough Hydro Pump. Um, I dropped the Ice Beam. I think Play Rough was important for the Mirror, uh, and Hydro Pump was important for Bronzong and big hits on Hypno. Um, Ice Beam I was running, but I sort of came to the conclusion that it was only really there for Noctowl. Um, and whilst, whilst Noctowl is an issue against this team, um, I don't see switch advantages as being the big thing here, so I don't necessarily, as long as I can chip away at it, um, I don't think losing switch advantages is often the worst thing in the world here, so I kind of let that one go, um, especially given that I've got no fighters that are weak to Noctowl and, and, um, and no ghost type, attack, ghost type attackers, um, or indeed Mudslap Kangaskans, um, that Noctowl will take for a ride, so I, I sort of let myself get away with that for a bit. Um, so the Quillfish and Raticate are sort of questionable picks, uh, some might argue. Uh, but what I what I really like about them is that they can combine really well together with a Lowland Muck for a double dark strategy. Um, certainly against teams that have no fighters and fair, you know, the Charmers in particular are the, are the sort of main answer to a Lowland Muck. Um, what I liked about this three, and I'm going to show an example um, shortly, is leading Quillfish to try and catch the Charmer. Um, but then, if you've got a bad lead, say you swap into a Lowland Muck to try and draw out the Charmer, um, burning its shields with Sludge Wave, um, you've get, you get fainted down, of course, but then you come back in with Quillfish, and the, you know Quillfish resists all of Wigglytuff's charge moves and charm, so um, you don't have to shield anything in return. And then you've got uh, a Lowland Raticate in the back, or, or anything, but I, I like doing it double dark. Um, in the back with two shields at full health to take on two of your opponent's Pokemon. Uh, and there's every chance they might have a, a Bronzong in there, um, which can't really do much back to you. So I'm going to show you a clip of that in action um, from a previous practice tournament against Phil Jim Bob. Um, this was an Obstagoon in the place of Raticate, but at the time uh, when I first started using Raticate, I was running Hyper Beam, Hyper Fang. Uh, so a similar thing would be achievable here. So I'm just going to hit play. So Quillfish lead, terrible lead, atrocious lead. Um, so straight into the muck. So the Bronzong has to switch and perfect, the Charmer comes in. So I go for the Sludge Waves to burn the shields. Um, now, of course, if he doesn't shield it, he he faints, but that's great because I've got Raticate in the back as well. Um, so that then clears the path for my other dark type. So he shields the first one. Shields the second one. So shields are down. Now, as I say, back in with Quillfish. Resist everything that Wigglytuff can do to me, so I don't need to spend a shield. Just go for the, the neutral water damage from... Water Gun and Aqua Tail. And then come in with Obstagoon in this case. Um, Raticate in the case of the current team since Obstagoon got banned. Uh, and you can see him waiting there because he's coming to terms with the fact that he's got no answers to this. Um, certainly with two shields, now his charm has gone.
you get the drift. There's not much the uh, the, the psychic bronze on can do to it. Um, and I've got hyper beam there as a big nuke to hit them up, or any, anything else you might have had hyper beam could have hit. Um, now I straight away, I straight away from hyper beam on the Alil and Reticate after a previous tournament where I faced a team with Frostlass and Bronzong and Alil and Muk, and so that's kind of an ideal uh, team you want to be facing with a with a double dark strategy, really. Um, but without running the crunch, I'm just you know you're stuck high and dry against Frostlass. Um, Bronzong's much harder to beat, even with hyper beam. You know it'll do a chunk, but crunch will crunch is so much more efficient. It might save you a shield that you know you might not need to shield a, a bulldoze if you go straight crunch. So I switched, um, I switched uh, hyper beam to crunch there on the right cave. So that's the team. Uh, weaknesses wise, I've not got a fighter and I've not got a charmer. Um, so I'm a little bit weak to sort of normal types because I, I, I've not got fighters. Um, specifically, like really bulky ones uh, or spammy ones, like uh, Munchlax, Licky Tongue, Licky Licky, you know, with the body slam spams. Uh, so they could be a bit problematic. Um, and again, without the Charmer, um, fighting types could be problematic if I'm not careful. I mean, I've got four things that can sort of take them on. Um, but Toxicroak in particular, uh, well, not in particular, I guess, you know, yeah, so fighting types I need to be careful for, um, especially when they're in combination with Hypno. Um, because Hypno beating the Quillfish, Azumarill, Bronzong, and Noctowl uh, is going to protect the fighting types really nicely. Uh, so I've only I've only got dark types that beat him now, and that's something that didn't occur to me until perhaps it was a little late. Um, so yeah, Hypno in combination with a fighting type it could be problematic as well. So that's something to bear in mind. So the first round was was fairly straightforward. Uh, won that one quite comfortably. Second round was against Jen, and that was much more difficult, really close games. I was really annoyed. It was like an 80-person tournament or whatever, um, and in round two, get someone that you play with once or twice a month anyway, you know, do a lot of practice with. So that was really upsetting um, that I had to play Jen so early on. And then we were joking afterwards about how, you know, how we could see it coming, where I was going to get Aaron in round three as well. Uh, and lo and behold, it came true. Aero Bubble in round three um, always beats me. He's a, he's a real top battler as well. Um, his team was Hypno, Alolan Muk, Noctowl, Toxicroak, Frostlass, and Azumarill. So straight away there, there's the Hypno and Toxicroak thing that worries me. Um, Azu, I don't really have any great counters to, apart from Quillfish and uh, Alolan Muk, which are sort of meh at best <laughs> to put it bluntly Noctowl I don't really have any great counters to apart from Bronzong um, but it's all, I feel like it's always risky bringing Bronzong um, because of Alolan Muk so I try and try and avoid bringing Bronzong if I can um, and Frostlass is just always a threat one of my favourite mods to use in PvP um, so Frostlass is, is something I'm really being careful for um, so let's see how it plays out so I lead Noctowl into Hypno, and I'm feeling okay about this. Um, uh, it's a losing matchup, I think, um, but it's only going to be a close one. Um, and I'm fine with that, because uh, if I can get a little bit of energy advantage, that's fine. Um, as I say, don't necessarily think switch advantage is always huge here. Um, so just going for more sky attacks. Um, Gets, he gets to a uh, gets to a thunder punch there before my second one goes through. So I was perhaps a bit slow on that, or an over tap maybe, which forced me to shield. Um, but I think I get to another sky attack here if I remember rightly. Yeah, that goes through. So that's going to bring him down. Oh, he uses the shields. That's fine. So I'm actually feeling quite good about this now. Um, I'm a shield up. Um, he's got no shields. So I go into Azu to try and to try and farm it down a bit. 
Um, and if you look closely at the switch, I'm going to try and time my switch um, to the bronze on to try and catch the thunder punch, but it doesn't doesn't quite go through in time. So I was a little slow on the, the change there. Uh, and now he shields down. I charge up to a hydro pump, and then I switch to bronze on to gain a bit of energy on bronze on as well, um, just to try and give myself options going into the end game. Um, he comes in with a Lolan Muck. Uh, I'm not going to shield this because I know I can tank it and then hit back with a bulldoze, but he manages to switch. Uh, so a fantastic play on his part. Like really, really good play. Um, so it ends up take, tanking the bulldoze with Azure really easily. Um, and that's game over. Like no, no amount of energy in the world is going to save me here. Um, so yeah, play rough on Azu. Shield his player off. And then Muck comes back in. And we see it's a poison jab Muck as well. So um, I'm ferociously trying to get to Hydro Pump because I don't think player off will kill. Um, but even had I gone for the... Um, even had I gone for the player off when it became available, I'd, I'd still have been too slow. I'd still have lost, still have lost on CMP. So, actually, a really close game uh, in game one. So, game two. I lead a Lowland Muck into Frostlass. Um, now, I know I lose the two shields, um, so I'm just going to make sure I don't shield twice. That way, I'll gain some sort of advantage uh, from this matchup. So say letting the first one through. Just get beat into the uh, charge move there, which is annoying, but that's how, that's how it goes. So I shield the second one to make sure I get my, my charge move off. Um, which is shields. So again, I'm, I'm up shields here. I'm um, feeling okay. Um, so I go into Quillfish. Um, can't go into Knocked Owl. Don't really want to take a Shadow Ball, so I, I shield there, and all of a sudden my advantage is gone. Uh, I'm going to try and Water Gun down, um, and I try again tried switching to try and catch a Shadow Ball with Knocked Owl, but it didn't quite go through, so I'm forced to take the Shadow Ball. So a bit of indecision there. I needed to either go for the Water, I needed to either go for the Aqua Tail to kill before taking the Shadow Ball, or get that switch right. And unfortunately, I got stuck between the two, uh, and that's left me in a situation now where I've got my Noctowl against his Noctowl and the whole other Pokemon as well. Um, so there's nothing I can do here. It turns out his, his last Pokemon's a Zoomerill, so um, had I managed to save a bit of energy on the Quillfish uh, and switch out, um, you know, rather than taking the Shadow Ball, a Sludge Bomb, a Sludge Wave would have done a hell of a lot to that Zoomerill. Um, so had had I got the switch through to Noctowl, it could have been a very different game. Certainly would have been a lot closer. Um, still would have been difficult for me to win though, because would have he would have had the switch advantage, which would have meant Noctowl could be lined up against Quillfish rather than Azumarill lined up against Quillfish. Um, so yes, I think he still would have won, but it wouldn't have been quite so one-sided. Um, so going into round three, Bronzong lead into a Zoomerill. Again, okay lead. Um, but clearly I want to get out of there for some reason, so I go straight into Muck. Straight for the Sludge Wave, no messing about. It's only one Snarl difference, and at this stage in the game, I don't, I don't need to make a risky play and go for a bait. So, straight for the Sludge Wave. Uh, tank the charge move. I'm going to try and get that second shield. He lets it through and he's able to farm me down uh, just before I get to a Dark Pulse, which is really annoying now because I've got to take another charge move. Um, I like to go into Bronzong, hoping that Raticate can come through for me in the back. Now he's fair, he's dead. Um, unfortunately, he reveals himself to have Hydro Pump, so Bronzong takes a massive hit there. Um, 
and then Frostlass comes in. Um, this is going to do a fair chunk. Hoping I can get to... Do I go for the... Oh, a shield. Perhaps a mistake there. Perhaps should be going for the farm down on uh, Quillfish. I'm hoping I can get to another Psy Shock um, or faint him down. And I do faint him down, so that's nice. Uh, big big bulldoze on, uh, on the muck. He's just going to farm me down. Even with Poison Jab, he can farm me down. Um, then Raticate comes in to, to clean up the uh, heal all the muck. Once I saw that he was Poison Jab, I kind of expected him to have um, Acid Spray rather than Sludge Wave, so no need to shield the first. Um, shielding the second will save him from taking a bit more Dark Pulse damage. Um, and then I can get to the Hyper Fang just in time. So I think this kills. Not quite, but a few quick attacks taken out. So I'm able to pull one back. So um, it wasn't a complete disaster, just 2 1. Um, I think perhaps the issue was um, I didn't really have a plan. It was more a case of, um, you know, oh, well, I'll, I'll lead this, and then if I lose the lead, I'm just uh, I've lost switch advantage, but I'll gain a bit of energy or whatever. Um, I didn't re I didn't really try and predict what he was going to bring, um, just because I thought that'd be quite risky given the the effectiveness of the hypnotoxic um, pairing against me. Um, so maybe a mistake there on my part. Um, just I, you know, just tried to go for general bulk rather than anything else, and it sort of backfired a little bit. Um, Frostlass in particular is a Pokemon that can really take advantage of uh, of that sort of attitude. Um, I mean, you saw how much the the neutral Shadow Ball did to Quillfish. It was just insane, like mad, mad damage. Um, so perhaps needed to be a bit more proactive in, in thinking what he was going to pick. Um, but of course, all credit to Aaron. Really good player. Um, fantastic, fantastically played game. Uh, fully deserved to fully deserved to win. Um, so that was round three. Then I uh, went on to round four. Um, I think I won three zero in round four. Yeah, I did. I won won three zero in round four because my opponent had a, a fairly spicy team. Certainly the spiciest team I've seen um, in the tournament. So that's one to look forward to. Um, and then in round five, uh, played this guy Zephy Masty. Um, I think I'm pronouncing that one right. Uh, their team was Tentacruel, Hypno, Noctowl, Licky Licky, Alolan Raticate, and Alolan Ninetales. Um, thought kind of a strange looking team. Uh, couldn't quite get my head around it. No, uh, no Fighter, no Azumarill, um, but he's got the Charmer, so and along with Noctowl, I'm thinking Bronzong should be a good pick here. Um, because it's got comfortable wins over Tentacruel, Noctowl and Ninetales. Uh, but then it's you know it's got a slight loss to, to Hypno. And it's also weak to the Licky Licky and the Raticate. Um, what I wasn't thinking at the time, which in hindsight I see now, uh, is because I haven't got a fighter that pair of Licky Licky and Raticate is really dangerous against me. Um, Licky Licky in particular with it spamming the body, body slams left, right and centre, um, that damage can add up rather quickly. Um, so it's a, it's a tough one for me here because I think Bronzong's almost a must bring, but he's got two picks that almost seem like no drawback, no drawback plays that, that beat the Bronzong. So it's a really tough one. Um, so let's see what, what happens. So I lead the Bronzong into the Raticate. I just I didn't think he'd lead Raticate. I I very rarely lead Raticate, so I thought maybe he'll be the same. Uh, so I, I safe switch to a Lola Muck, um, knowing that his counter switch will likely be the Charmer, uh, so I can try and get shields out of it. And I get that right. 
Um, I make sure I under tap there to get, land the second sludge wave. Um, and I'm able to, to knock it out. So I'm in a great position. Um, but then he comes in with Licky Licky. Uh, and perhaps a mistake here. Well, no, that's probably not a mistake. I go into Bronzong, even though it's a losing matchup, because Bronzong's more used against Licky Licky than it is against Raticate. Um, I don't shield that because I don't think it's an earthquake, um, but it is an earthquake and it takes me out. Um, so now Raticate's got a lot of work to do here. Um, not impossible, I'm a shield up and it's, the licks are going to do no damage. Um, so I've got two shields, so I feel like I may as well, may as well go for the shields. The Hyper Fangs are going to do more damage to me than the Body Slams. He makes a bold play and goes for the Resisted Crunch. Like, not sure about that at all. Um, Hyper Fang here. Um, yeah, I'm just, just going with the, the neutral hits. Um, hoping I can get him down. So you go for a crunch to, to kill him off and he wins CMP. I'm just... Oh. Just not nice. So I completely let these bubbles go just so I can get a few quick attacks in. Uh, but he doesn't even let me do that to his credit. He switches switches straight into to Licky Licky and gets to a body slam. So um, had I had I gone to farm down his Raticate, it could have been different. But, um, but yeah, he, uh, he beat me beat me in uh, in round one in the end. Uh, so round two. I zoom well into Hypno. Again, possibly a losing matchup, possibly a winning one, depending on IVs. Um, but either way, it's going to be close. So I try and switch into the Muck to tank the Thunder Punch and get an energy advantage. Um, but I mistime it. I go a bit too soon or he does an extra confusion. Um, but again, one thing I, I love about Mork is I can take shields here or do a lot of damage. Um, so I, I take the first shield, uh, tank a Hyper Fang, and then get a big sludge wave off. Um, good play of him to switch into a little Raticate, knowing that uh, he can avoid it being lined up against the Zoom Reel this way. Um, I'm just not quite going to get to a Dark Pulse. So again, just coming just short of the, the charge move. Um, and now I'm in a tough position because I've got a zoom roll and knocked out in the back, neither of which really want to be taking on the hip, uh, the hip now. Um, I do that because I don't want to, I don't want to use the charge um, moves on a zoom roll uh, on the right cake while it's got such little health. I feel like you know it's not a very efficient use of the charge move, so I'm going to try and farm it down with not tile, but of course he counter switches straight out. So that's that plan scuppered, so good play on his part to, uh, to recognize that. Uh, and he comes back in with the mirror. Um, so it's uphill battle for me here. I think I just about tank this and get my sky attack. Yep. IV's coming into play there. Um, he just about tanks it, so I go back to a zoom roll. Oh no, I don't, I faint. Oh well. Um, and yeah, it's, uh, it's not going to uh, not going to end well for me here. He's just got too much too much health on his hip now. And that's more or less all she wrote in round two. Yeah, back to back thunder punch. Um, so again, like difficult to pinpoint what exactly went wrong. Just again, a sort of lack of a plan really. Um, so into round th into the third game, uh, already lost it at this point. Just hoping I can claw something back. Um, zoom rule against the Nine Tails lead is is okay. Um, I can't remember what I've got in the back. Reasonably sure uh, I've got the deal Lowland Muck and then something else. I think it's a Lowland Muck and a Lowland Muck and Raticate. I think actually. So actually having a zoom rule here is is ideal for me. Uh, so I shield that just to make sure I can get some play rough damage or a second shield. I get the shield. Uh, so rather than letting him gain some charms, I'm just going to go straight to a Lolan Muck. Um, 
just to start building up the energy to hit him with a sludge wave. Uh, mistake there on my part. I just about tanked the ice beam and I don't wait for the energy to come through for the sludge wave. Uh, I instead just panic and go for the dark pulse and that stops me from finishing off the nine tails. Um, I'm going to Raticate to start the farm down because I don't want Azumarill to then get trapped in the switch timer against whatever he's got. Um, so it's just just mistake after mistake here, really. Um, again, third game and I'd already lost 2 0, so it's not particularly important. But um, yeah, you can see I'm, you can see I'm trying to switch there, um, but just the timer doesn't quite come up for me. Uh, so I'm forced into shielding. It would have been nice to have used uh, as it was a sack spot there. And then the key key in the back. Again, really difficult for me to deal with without the without having a fighter. Um, uh, yeah, so he sort of recognised that by by that by this point. Again, in vain I go for the sack swap. Um, just just praying I can get to another another move, but it's just too fast. Uh, so I get um, absolutely demolished three zero in round five. Um, and that, that put me to 3-2 th um, and you know this was my weighted tournament so I was a little bit a little bit nervous and worried actually because um, you know that was such a <laughs> such a disastrous defeat like I was just no I was never even in that game um, you know in round 3 against the Aero Bubble I, I, you know I I could see that it was close looking back on it and I, I felt like I was in the game at the time. This was just just brutal, absolutely like devastating loss. Um so certainly something I'll have to look out for more against using when uh, when using this team is the uh the double normal there. And I, I, I don't understand it to be quite honest, why he's got Licky Licky and and Ray Kate. Um was going to be careful of coming off a bit salty. Well, I am a bit salty, but anyway, um, it's, you know, Licky, 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 and Raticate, both primarily a sort of normal type damage they're putting out. Yes, Licky, Licky has Lick, but it's the body slam spam you, you sort of having it there for, and Lick helps it out against Hypno and Bronzong. Um, but Alolan Raticate does the same thing, um, you know, beating the the confusion users. Um, putting out normal damage, it's weak, even weak to the fighters still. So I was really, uh, and Wigglytuff is the, is the main charmer that people use. Um, so a little eradicates losing to that. Licky Licky doing ghost damage with Lick isn't, hasn't got a great matchup. So I'm really not sure what they're both there, what they're both there for, to be completely honest, but they, uh, they certainly did a job on me anyway. So maybe, uh, Maybe Zephy Masty is making some sort of next level play that I'm I'm not quite with. Um, but yeah, there's the uh, there's the two losses. Uh, I went on to win the next two the, the last two rounds, um, only just like really really close games. Um, so hopefully um, people will be looking forward to seeing what went right rather than just what went wrong. Um, and I look forward to uh, to getting someone else on there to do a bit of co-commentary. Um, just thought I'd be ke I'd keen to get this out straight away while my thoughts on the team um, and the matches were, were fairly fresh. O overall, happy with the team. Um, I think the the sort of questionable picks of, of Raticate and Quillfish um, perhaps didn't cover themselves in glory in this in these two matches, but I think in general, I just certainly in, in round five played poorly. Um, but I think every I think um, anyone who watches part two will see. I think everything in this in this team of six pulled it pulled its weight. So certainly would uh, would use this team again, and perhaps even will be. Um, might change it up a little bit now the weighted ones out of the way. Um, any excuse to use Frostlass, um, and I'm on that. So so I'll possibly have another look at. the I'll possibly have another look at teams and see what happens but for now more than happy using this team uh, so yeah i'm gonna leave it there i hope you've enjoyed and learned something um catch you later <laughs>